Jazz is known for having improvisation which I think is really the thing that makes it jazz. Now what, who, and how that looks can be anything. Often there's horns involved, but what kind of horns and how many? That depends, right? You could have five saxophones and a drummer. That's not standard, but you could have that. You could have three trombones and a bunch of rhythm section instruments. That's still, you could still do jazz with that. Um, we don't always have instrumentation that looks how people expect, but you can make jazz with it. And I think it's really difficult nowadays to define what jazz is and what it sounds like or any of that kind of thing because there's so many different genres that are out there. And I think that, you know, there's there's so much crossover that happens, whether it's in rock or pop or in that type of thing and incorporating elements of jazz uh, that again, I, I don't think, um, it's really hard to say. It really is hard to say. I went to a performance, you know, just last night that really incorporated a lot of like metal and that type mm -hmm. of thing and, and rock and that type of, but it definitely was in a jazz setting. It was in a jazz club. So I think that um, defining jazz and really what is that, it's difficult. But she's right, I think the, the cornerstone of it really has to do with the improvisational aspect. Jazz is in most music we hear nowadays. It just Correct. may not be titled under jazz or look like how you expect or just have a saxophone playing a solo for a long time. That's what that's okay. Sure. But it can have a lot of a lot of things. It reaches into many musics. My name is Justin Macadera. I'm Janelle Orcherton. And we are the organizers of, of the, the CU, CU Jazz, Jazz Festival. Festival. A couple years ago when I first moved to town and I met Justin, um, we noticed there was a really vibrant scene of jazz musicians here, both in school, on campus, and then also local musicians. Uh, but they weren't really collaborating a lot, at least from what I could tell, what I was involved in. And a lot of the places I lived before had had a jazz festival, and I was surprised there wasn't one here. So we started one. I'm the executive director for a, a nonprofit organization called Music, uh, Music Defying Boundaries. And really what it was, was it's this organization kind of looking for opportunities to be able to work in the community and that type of thing. So as soon as I talked to Janelle about, you know, she started talking about ideas about a jazz festival specifically, uh, I just thought it was a great fit for the organization. The festival has now grown to be about four days, give or take a few on the beginning and end now. Uh, but it started off as just two days, so it's exciting to see that it's continuing to build and build. But usually we have the structure of some sort of opening day fun. Um, usually there's like a soft opening of a talk or some sort of community uh, discussion, I guess, with an opening night party. And then um, we feature artists every night. And then uh, we sort of have an ending party, which involves a jazz brunch and some kind of, uh, again, community involvement uh, performance. And then throughout the festival, we have a lot of uh, partnerships with schools, um, both middle schools and high schools, and also the university. Uh, and then as we have these artists coming in, we try to plug them into different areas of the city where people who want their specific expertise or that artist is asked to go to a specific place. Um, so once we have sort of the main structure figured out, we kind of try to fill it in, slot them into as many places as we can. Janelle's done a really good job of developing great relationships within the community. And because of that and the success of getting up to a fifth year of a jazz festival, um, because of that, that success, I mean, we're, we're able to keep approaching these people and all of them, uh, many of the people that we talked to have always you know, come back and said, yeah, we really enjoyed working with you. We enjoyed working with this organization. Janelle has always done a good job of keeping in touch with people. So yes, she's exactly right. The ball started very small in the beginning, that's for sure. Um, but, but after this period of time, we've really developed some great relationships within the community. Urbana is a great place for the Jazz Festival because it's a place where you can just make stuff happen. So when it was very small, the first year, it was just two days, and it was sort of like, well, where can we put this? Where would be reasonable or who would be interested in supporting <laughs> something that's brand new, that's tiny, and no one knew who we were, right. no one knew who I was. Right. And uh, it was they were really welcoming and like, well, let's give it a try and see what happens. If it's no good, we won't do it anymore. Um, so yeah, Urbana's been really supportive in that way with whether it's 
interesting new spaces. Um, we partnered with the Cohen Building last year, um, which is was sort of in the middle of a renovation, but they were interested in letting us use their space and sort of a the, the vibe was really, let's just work together and see what happens, um, which has been quite useful for me and very interesting to put these things together in Urbana. I am particularly proud of the fact that every single year um, we make a profit. I mean, that's the thing, is that when we are working with organizations and that type of thing, a lot of them want to know, hey, is this something that is going to be um, is this going to be happening year after year after year? Because unfortunately, as we all know, especially in this town, is that there are things that will start up and with, with all kinds of vigor and everybody's very excited about it, but unfortunately the funding is just not there. And every single year we have run in the black. That is absolutely incredible and that is truly a testament to Janelle's work with all these different organizations and creating really great structures and partnerships within the community. And also too, I would say, it's great to be in a place, this community, that is supporting. You know, uh, there is not a lot of places I think that would be able to support uh, a jazz festival like this year after year after year, um, but we found that, that we, we are able to do that. One of the things that, that we're noticing is that we have a lot of young people getting involved in the festival. So whether it's you know high school level or middle school level and that type of thing, but we have these like especially these little high school bands that will start up, and all of a sudden we kind of they perform at, at the thing, and then all of a sudden they kind of start to blossom out and start doing their own type of thing. So we can always say it's like you know with some of these things, it's like this is one of their first performances, um, one of their first you know uh, ventures out into this, and they're continuing to go. So we're we're hoping, I mean, it's young, so it's hard to say what's gonna happen in the future, but I would love to see that happen. I would love to see more of the young people come out and start performing and taking a chance. And then from there, flourishing into something else, you know, broadening it into a bigger area. Um, that's what I would like to see. I would describe it personally as engaging. I think that if you, if even if you are new to jazz, let's say, there is a performance for you. I promise. And let's say that you are, that you have listened to quite a bit of jazz. There is going to be another performance for you. Like for instance, this year I know that we're talking about doing some more avant-garde performances and free jazz performances that a lot of people at first are kind of going. Wait, what is this? What are we doing here? And that type of thing. But this gives you, in a very short period of time, so many different things available for you to, so that you can see it's like, oh, I actually really like this genre, or I'm really interested in this, and I would like to find out more about this. That's kind of our thing, is that we kind of want to throw this out there at you, right? But then you walk away going, boy, I really kind of want to find out more about this, especially since we're doing so many more people, uh, so many people in town and that type of thing. Oh, now I know this person. Now I'm going to go check them out at their other performances. We want this to kind of be this ongoing thing that people are always having kind of in the back of their mind. Yeah, that might be my favorite thing, actually, now that you mention it, is the chance to offer uh, so many different kinds of jazz to people in a very approachable, often very intimate setting with people, you know, in places that are really easy to get to, easy to understand, um, and whether it's jazz and however you thought about it or how you think you're supposed to think about it, there's gonna be something there that's gonna be exciting. And that's a real point of uh, inclusion for us is that we have those different types. I think one of the things that, that really is my favorite is to see, to see the community members coming out and getting really excited about the performances. So the second year, we had John Mulder come out, and I think that that was just such an exciting concert. He's a Chicago native, a very interesting performer, um, an ordained Catholic priest, and, and it, but just brought this amazing band with him, and it was the most it was it was the most packed that I've ever seen the Iron Post. It was it, it, we had to turn people away 
at some point in time. I haven't seen that at the Iron Post. And it was just so great because everybody was so excited about it. And I just remember after that per performance specifically, so many people coming up and just saying, what a wonderful time that they had. We really um, need more of this in the community uh, and, and we're happy to try to bring it. The festival provides a lot of performance opportunities. So that could be um, live painting with sound sculpture. Um, sometimes that's music for um, painters, for poets, uh, for creation of lots of things at the same time. Other times it's more of a theater experience, so we're going to sit, we're going to watch and clap. Other times it's for dancing. Other times it's for standing around and jumping. Sometimes it's for you know walking around the artists. Um, festival's really meant to bring a lot of types of people to a lot of types of music, which happens to be jazz. There's so much space to grow the festival, so I, ideally it would be great to have more things happening during the year. So have the sort of cornerstone festival in the fall, but maybe have some sort of residency in the spring. Um, the residency could be at a school, it could, it could draw in community groups. I have many, many ideas for things that it could grow into, whether it's a monthly music series, whether it's a, a, comp uh, a composer's um, element. We had a composer workshop last year that we partnered with that went really well. Um, but, you know, as jazz changes, um, the people who are listening to it, we, you can get more people. And I think um, it's important to me that we don't just focus on one type of jazz, whatever that is. Um, there's so yeah. many different kinds. And I think growing the festival will really um, use that option. So whether it's a, a venue specific that we could partner with, I don't know, if owning a venue in the future in many years, um, but there's lots of space to grow the festival. One of the things that I would really like to do this year and, and, and going forward is really try to push more of the avant-garde. I think that a lot of times the avant-garde is looked at as scary and, and not really sure what's going on or what's happening. However, um, we live very close to the birthplace of a lot of this kind of stuff and that's Chicago with the AACM, which is the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians. And it formed in the 60s out of this thing of, of of musicians wanting to try to do something different, do things in a different way, do performances in a different way, look at music in a completely different way. Maybe I'm looking at it at, as painting now, or, or I, I talk about it as sound sculpture and that type of thing, and really creating some innovative spaces. And yes, I think that you know, on the surface, sometimes it can get a little bit weird and that type of thing, but once you get into these great performances, I just always find that people always have a great time, and it's and it com they they're coming out of it going, wow, I didn't I didn't know that that was available for me, I didn't know that that's what this was all about, and I'm excited to see more of that. And so, like I said, that's that's what I'd like to see is just see more of that type of thing going in that direction.